some of you within spitting range, so we're sure. going to do it. <laughs> okay? Boy, I have a dry sense of humor, all right? So you can find that. John chapter 2 is where I'm going to start today. I found some interesting scriptures when during my devotions early in the early part of early part of this week, and I uh, thought I'd share them with you. John chapter 2 opens with the Lord's first miracle at the marriage of Canaan, where he was an invited guest with his disciples. And marriage ceremonies in that day ran possibly up to a week. Can you imagine furnishing a reception for a week? Uh, that's a lot of food. And in this case, it's a lot of wine, because they expected wine to be there. And when they ran out, uh, Mary, the Lord's mother, said, uh, told the servants to do whatever he instructed them to do. And so he told them to gather the, the water pots, and there were six of them. And these water pots carried, contained anywhere from 20 to 30 gallons, which means he converted somewhere between 120 and 180 gallons of water into wine. And it was good wine, it wasn't poor wine, and then one of the guests commented that most people save, save the bad wine for the last part, where I guess everybody's feeling well. And so, but he saved the best for the first part. Well, no one knew that the water had been turned into wine except the Lord and the servants that served it. And so that, that's the beginning, that's this first miracle. And in verse number 11, it says, This beginning of signs Jesus did in Canaan of Galilee and manifested his glory, and his disciples believed in him. The word that jumped out at me is the word believe. And uh, it's important that his disciples believe not only in the Lord as Savior, but as the Messiah, and to give evidence of that. We, as Christians, we need to give evidence that we belong to the Lord. Amen. The way that we live, our conversation is usually the first indication of, uh, of our relationship with the Lord. Uh, I can remember years ago, I was, I was actually in Bible college, and I was working for one of the deacons of the church, and he had a business, he had a, uh, he was a contractor, and then he also started out uh, uh, distributing kitchen cabinets. He bought them, and, and he had me to design kitchens for him, and because I had some architectural background, so he had me do that. But I remember one day in the warehouse, uh, uh, one of his sons uh, wanted to tell a dirty joke, and I just walked away. And I just, but I never have forgot that. And that's been over 40 years ago. But what I'm trying to get you to see is sometimes we give the wrong impression by our conversation to others. As Christians, we need to give, have wholesome conversations with people. And that that is part of our evidence of what the, uh, who we are. It's hard to tell a dirty joke and then turn around and invite somebody to church. It just doesn't doesn't quite add up in the, in the eyes of a lost person. And it's important that we live outwardly like the Lord knows us inwardly. Yes. And our hearts need to reflect our outward appearance and our outward behavior. The, the disciples believed in him, not only for his messiahship, but for the way that he carried himself. And by the, by the Lord changing this water into wine, he gave evidence that he's concerned about little things. And I want to just sort of camp out here for about a minute. When you pray, do not neglect asking God for little things. I don't know how you are, but at, at one point in my life, I just asked God for big things. But somewhere along the way, I, I realized that God is interested in little things. Uh, I can remember running late and asking God to 
make all the stoplights green. And lo and behold, I was on time. Because many of them were green. And that, that sounds stupid, but it worked. It's the only thing I can say. Now, God is interested in little things. So when something seems insignificant in, in the eyes of others, but it's important to you, pray about it. God, help me to whatever it is. Help me to be whatever I, I need to be. Help me to do whatever it is you want me to do. Help me just to have a smile today and be an encouragement. Uh, help me to be a stranger and encourage them along the way. Uh, God's interested in little things as well as the big things, okay? And I hope you carry that out, out these doors and, and remember that where you, where you live. Uh, sometimes a smile is just what a person needs, that they're having a discouraging day, uh, something just adverse happened uh, to them. And, uh, it's, it's important that we show our relationship with God and it, it is sincere. This manifestation of reassuring the, the faith walk that the Lord gave was needed for the disciples. All of us need encouragement at particular times in our life. When finances go south or there's a sickness in, in, the, in the household or a death in the family or something adverse that goes on. We need encouragement. We know to look to the Lord, but sometimes we tend to wallow in self-pity and sorrow. We tend to do that. We may not do it intentionally, but we do. We're, we are people of emotions, and our emotions take control of us sometimes. Uh, we like to say we're strong and we can put on a good front and be a good hypocrite and look strong. But really deep inside, it's okay to hurt. It's okay to express your hurt and your sorrow. People will disappoint you along the way. Uh, don't let them get you down or keep you down. It's, it, it's, it happens. It just happens. It's life. It just happens. But the disciples were encouraged because they believed in him. It's, uh, they, they needed that encouragement. I want to turn over a couple of chapters in chapter 17 and just read two verses. Uh, this is taking place in the upper room. And in verse number 8, he says, and the Lord is speaking, he said, he's actually told us, praying, he says, I have given them, that's the disciples' words, which you have given me, that's his heavenly Father has given him, that they have received them, and that have known surely that I come forth from you, and they have believed that you sent me. That was important for the disciples to understand that the heavenly Father has sent Jesus to this earth. That includes the fact that Jesus pre-existed before he ever came to this earth. And so when he came to this earth, he was leaving heaven to come here, to, not only to be born of the, uh, of the Virgin Mary, but to live a life that was an example for you and I to live. Jesus, if you, when you read the Gospels, you always find Jesus is trying to encourage people or help them see their sin. The Pharisees had a terrible time of recognizing their own sin. They were so lifted up in pride and peer pressure that they forgot that the Messiah actually forgives. But in verse number 20, this is where you and I come in. This is the Lord still praying. He says, I do not pray for these alone, that is the disciples, but for also for those who will believe in me through their word. We believe the word of God through the disciples that's been passed down through, from generation to generation to generation because it's the, some of the disciples wrote part of the word of God. John, the disciples, wrote this portion of scripture. Matthew wrote a large portion of scripture. Peter wrote a large portion of scripture. Those were of the disciples. God uses his people to do his work because they believe in his name and they're willing to trust him and just and accept what he does. And 
He includes you and I. Uh, he includes, don't, don't say, well, he only uses the preacher. If he only uses the preacher and you don't do anything, then this generation will never be reached with the gospel. One person can't do the entire work. It takes everybody. It takes prayer support. It takes us communicating and talking and witnessing and sharing. It, just, it takes us being real and being willing to make adjustments in our life. I don't know how you are, but I, I, uh, I find that the Lord still uses me and still corrects me. You think we, most of us are in here old enough to know how to behave. Most of us in here old, are old enough to know how to speak properly and not use uh, uh, derogatory words or insulting words with other people. But we all need help at times. We all, and we might as well admit it. Don't be so lifted up in pride and say, I'm perfect. Well, you're heading for trouble if you're willing to say that. Uh, uh, some of you may be hard-headed, but you're not that hard-headed. God has a way of getting your attention. The second thing I want us to see is that after he leaves uh, Canaan of Galilee, uh, he goes to the pa Passover in Jerusalem. That brings me down to, uh, uh, and while he was at Jerusalem, he was talking about uh, the destruction of the temple and the Pharisees were saying, it took 46 years to build this thing. He's going to build it in three days? What? He's got to be crazy. But he was talking about his resurrected body. But in verse number 22, he says, Therefore, when he had ridden, risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said to them, and they believed the scriptures and the word which Jesus had said. <clears throat> this right here is an admonition for every one of us to spend time in the word of God. I've read the Bible through, I don't know how many times. I haven't counted. But I forget it. If you look at my Bible, I highlight scriptures. I use yellow and red and orange and green. And uh, Every once in a while I find a, a purple one, but it doesn't stand out quite as much. If you look through all my Bibles that I have stored up on the top shelf in my office, You'll find every one of them are marked up, and you'll find every one of them have notes in them. <clears throat> I've typically said to myself, and only to myself, one day I'm going to find a Bible, we'll get a Bible with wide margins, and I'm going to write all these notes down in one Bible. But, uh, I doubt if I ever do it. Uh, I, I was looking at some note yesterday, and I thought, I wrote that, that's not quite correct. You know? that's, that was the thought at the time. But when God gives you something, what, is it, what does it take for you to remember it? I highlight so I can find it. I highlight so it reminds me that God has spoken to me. And, as, and my yellow highlighters sometimes fade, and so I highlight them again in yellow or I underline them in green or something. Uh, but it, they, they, lift it, they lift Scripture up to me. Something that I've, I've learned just in the last couple of years, is that when I I read my Bible and I have I have a certain ritual that I go through. I read part of the New Testament, I read part of the Old Testament, and after I finish reading the, the Old Testament, I go back and read the New Testament that I just read, and I just read the highlighted parts, and then I bow in prayer for thirty seconds or so, and just pray it and remind myself of those scriptures. It is good that we believe the scripture because that is our light, our path to walk in. It helps me to understand that the Bible is important enough. I'm trying to, I'm doing some research on a book and I'm, what I've done in, in this particular book I found uh, in my Bible where in the New Testament where Old Testament scriptures were hot or quoted, and in my Bible it has those Old Testament scriptures in italics. So I've written them down, and I've arranged them all, and the amazing thing, I've found 
so far is that the Ten Commandments, particularly the ones that belong, that are written directly to man, are repeated numerous times in the, in the New Testament. And I have this, I have this thought. Okay, parents, this is you. If you tell your child to do something and they don't do it, and you tell them again and they don't do it, you may get their attention otherwise. When the Bible repeats something, it's to get our attention and to make it dwell in our hearts and, and for us to take it to heart and do it. And part of the, these last six commandments particularly, God just repeats over and over and over again because he wants his people, our society, to obey them. You know, like, don't murder. You know, uh, don't commit adultery. Don't covet. Don't steal. Don't use foul language. Those are the admonition for us to obey for our benefit. And when we fail to do that, we hurt ourselves. We limit ourselves. We hinder ourselves. We, we may even break fellowship with the Lord in, the, in our manner of living. God wants to use us, but the disciples believed the scripture and the word which Jesus said. If Jesus said it, we better believe it. Yeah. Not only that we need to believe it, but we need to do it. And um, and that's a that's a challenge for us to do at times. It's not always easy to, to turn the other cheek. If you're typically like I was when I was young, I was willing to turn their cheek. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, we. God has allowed us to grow and mature and to help us all along our journey. And, it, and the Christian life is a journey. And, and the older we get, the hopefully the better we become acquainted with God and his, and his, and his methodology and what he wants us to do. Uh, I'm sure that somewhere along life's journey you have been taken advantage of. And sometimes you've been taken advantage of by Christians. Well, what do you do when someone comes to you and asks you for help? Right after you've been taken advantage of. That's, a, that's an individual answer that you have to give. Sometimes you want to say, I'm not helping another Christian. They're a bunch of freeloading, whatever. And they, they won't do anything. Well, when God tells you don't, then don't. But if he doesn't tell you don't, then do. Uh, I've had people take advantage of me, and uh, it hurts. My wife, my wife, she doesn't use this word. This is what when she speaks, when, when she reminds me someone's taking advantage of, of me, I use this word on my own self, okay? What a sucker you are. I mean, that's that's what I say to myself. Um, but I also have learned that God rewards my wife and I for giving and helping people even when they take advantage of us. And we do it to serve the Lord, not uh, for praise or anything like that. If when God deals with you, do whatever he tells you to do. But they, they believe the scripture. And the scripture is, is hard, to, hard to obey sometimes. Luke chapter 9. Oh, chapter, uh, uh, chapter, I'm going to go to chapter 24 first. Chapter 24. The disciples were on the Emmaus Road after the crucifixion, after the, after the resurrection. And they were walking with the Lord. They didn't know it was the Lord walking with them. It's only after he blessed the food that their eyes were open. But they made a, an astounding statement. Uh, in verse number one. Verse number 32. 
John, uh, Luke chapter 24. And they said one to another, Did not our heart burn within us when he talked with us on the, on the road and while he opened the scriptures to us? It's amazing how scripture will come back to you and talk to you and remind you because you forgot all about it and how to apply it. But these two disciples, they've been walking with the Lord. Now think of it, they, they walked several miles with the Lord and their hearts were burning with a, within them of everything that he was saying from Moses on because he it was opening up the scripture and they didn't recognize it was the Lord. Many times God deals with us and we don't recognize it until later. But the later reminds us that we have been with the Lord and he's been dealing with us. That is refreshing to the human body, to our spiritual life, to let God use us along the way. Uh, this, the same thing happened with Mary Magdalene and, and Mary and, and, and uh, uh, Joanna. When they came to the, came to the tomb, uh, Luke chapter 24, and verse number 11, uh, They said, their words seemed like idle words to us to the disciples, and they did not believe them. Sometimes you will talk spiritually, and the recipients think you are crazy, or off, off the charts, or don't know what you're talking about. But God is using you and directing you to say something for them to hear and for them to benefit from, but they didn't, re they didn't receive it at that time. It was the disciples wanted proof that the Lord had been resurrected. That's the reason Peter and John ran to the, ran to the tomb to look. Uh, God has a way of just reminding us to believe Scripture. Remind. The third, the third belief that comes is found in the next verse. In verse number 23, it says, And now when he, as the Lord was in, was in Jerusalem at the Passover during the feast, many believed in his name when they saw the signs which he did. It is our purpose and our mission to convince others to believe in the name of the Lord. And it is our desire to do that, but so many times we fail to do that we fail to uh, say they won't, they won't believe or, or we don't have time to go into this. But let God lead you and let God use you. And if God is leading you to say something about the Lord or about Mount Zion, then take the time to say it. Yeah. You know, uh, people, people respond differently. But just a kind word may be just the pride that they need to, to believe and accept the Lord. Give you, uh, uh, I was going to say, give you a, a stupid example, but I better leave the stupid, stupid part off, okay? Open your mouth and share what God has done with you. I met the Lord in January, and I went to a draft festival in February, and I didn't know any scripture, to be honest. But I had to sit around a room all day with the other people and trying to witness and I couldn't witness because I didn't know enough at the time. But I shared what I knew. And the reason I say that is that you may not be able to quote 500 scriptures, but share what God has done in your life. Share how he's taken care of you. Share uh, the realization that you, when you know that the Lord is your Savior and the change that he brought in your life. You, you should be able to look back on the day that you asked the Lord in your heart and you knew from that day forward your life had changed. Just be able to share that much with, with, with whoever you're talking to. Let God speak through you and, and use you. Um, God wants to use you. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number 1 says, Now faith is the substance uh, or the realization of things hoped for, the evidence or the, the confidence that you have uh, of things not seen. I have never seen heaven. I've never seen streets of gold. I've never seen uh, gates uh, so big of pearl. I can't, 
This is my thinking. If, if a gate is, is a pearl and it's big enough for me to walk through it, what is the size of that oyster? I've never, I've never seen a, a, a pearl that big, okay? The biggest pearl I've ever seen is not even as big as the regular marble. But I believe it. I believe there's going to be gates. I believe there are gates of pearl. There are streets of gold. And I can say that with confidence because of the Word of God, because I believe the Word of God. Yeah. Uh, and, and don't think just be, when Jesus walked the earth that, that uh, miracles happen only then, they don't happen now. They still happen. Yes, they do. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. He still works miracles. It may not be, you may not be able to walk into a hospital. I wish I could walk into Chipping Hill Hospital and clean it out. I really wish I could. Uh, maybe it's because I don't have the faith to believe it or something. But miracles still happen. People are still healed. People are, are their life is, has been extended. Or God has protected them from accidents. God has provided the, the, the material needs. Uh, for them to, to get through whatever the situation is in their life. Uh, I personally believe God's put gas in my gas tank. <laughs> you know, I used to travel back and forth to, uh, uh, to Springfield, Missouri when I was in college. And I can remember being in the middle of the night and can't find a gas station and think and that, that needles all the way over there on empty. That's when they had needles on gas tanks, okay? Uh, and God just got me down the road to a gas, a gas station. I, I believe in miracles. Yeah. I, never, I never saw an angel come up and, and open up the gas tank and pour gas in there, but I, I believe in miracles. God has a way of taking care of us if we're just willing, by faith, trusting Him. 